Good morning. Welcome to the 2016 Contractor Safety Breakfast. I'm Dean Reeve, President of the Saskatchewan Common Ground Alliance. I'd like to thank our breakfast sponsors, the SCGA member companies, and of course, all of you for taking the time to make safety a priority. Working to prevent damage to underground infrastructure is a responsibility we all share. Safe digging isn't a one-time effort, it's a process. It starts with having a safe digging plan in place and it ends with everyone going home safely at the end of the day. Each year around the province, incidents of line contacts, both buried and overhead, occur. Even one line hit is too many. These incidents occur because somewhere along the safe digging process, something was missed or went wrong. Line locates weren't requested. Locates were missed. Dig areas weren't properly identified. Safe digging practices were not followed near underground lines. And each year, these incidents cost Saskatchewan companies and residents millions of dollars in repair costs and lost time. But more importantly, each incident carries the potential for serious injury or death. We all have our roles to play in damage prevention. You are all an important part of the safe digging process. So on behalf of the SCGA, thank you for digging safely. Good morning, I'm Barb Tizaski, manager of SAS First Call. I'd like to echo Dean in thanking each of you for being here today. I'm excited to say that SAS First Call continues to see locate request volumes grow with over 140,000 line locates requested in 2015. 2015 also marked the launch of SAS First Call's mobile app and over 300 contractors have used this tool to request their locates. This year has more exciting changes related to how people can request locates which includes an update to SAS First Call's web request process. With the recent improvements, both contractors and homeowners now have the ability to use Google Imaging to virtually whiteline their work area, as well as have their tickets stored in one location where they can look at the requests and see the subscriber companies that were notified for each dig site. With the busy construction season just around the corner, I'd like to remind everyone to please take the time to click, call, or tap before they dig. Once your request is in, SAS First Call subscriber companies will work to have your lines marked within two business days. So please plan ahead and ensure all lines are located before beginning excavation. However, requesting a line locate is only one part of the safe digging process. After SAS First Call has done their part, the process continues. And that's where all of you come in. The process for uh, tailgate medium is, is to go over the job and then go over the risks and hazards and then obviously mitigate and uh, minimize as many hazards as possible. So we should have everybody sign off on the field level risk assessments as well as the tailgate meeting to ensure that everybody's on the same page. White lining is an industry best practice, whether using white paint or white stakes to show the route of the excavation, where it's going to be. It's a good communication tool, uh, an element of all the communication so that everyone involved knows the exact route where it's going to be. White lining is important for a number of reasons, and the biggest reason for me is, is the reduction of personal injury. It also reduces the chance of contacting utility and downtime for a contractor crew and makes it more efficient to work on that site. In a residential area, there's no mechanical digging within one meter on either side of the locate. So in that area, you'll either have to expose the underground facilities by hand or with a, with a hydrovac. That one meter allows for inaccuracy from the line marking itself, the inaccuracy of possibly the tracer wire that's beside the facility that you're looking for, uh, the locating equipment and possibly the locator 
uh, himself having a little bit of inaccuracy. And then even the excavation practices that we use are never perfect. set off a little bit extra and you come up with a one meter of area that you want to stay away from so that you can be sure that you're not going to contact the facility. When working near larger transmission lines, there's some special considerations. You're going to be notified and have some indication that you are working near a transmission line. Watch for that because there's things that you're going to need to take into consideration contact the facility. They will develop a safe working plan to help you operate safely around that facility. Some things that you might not expect are that even driving across the transmission line could cause damage and effects. Working within 30 meters of the transmission line, there are some uh, type of construction practices that could give you problems. I think the importance of the safe digging practice for the excavation tolerance zone is to, to create more of a dig area to fully cover the underground facility to ensure that there's no strikes or incidents. Uh, some of the safe methods used to dig while in the tolerance zone would be hand digging with a shovel and so on, or hydrovacking. The hydrovac process is essentially using pressurized water to excavate the ground to daylight and open up the underground infrastructure so that you can uh, obviously see it and not uh, create damage or incident. Daylighting was important essentially just to minimize any kind of incident or any kind of striking. If you can see the underground infrastructure, you'll have a much easier time not damaging or causing incident. Workers at excavation sites need to keep a number of things in mind. Uh, first, personal protective equipment is required. So they need to be aware of all personal protective equipment that is required by the employer. Personal protective equipment is any clothing, device, or article used by the worker to prevent injury or facilitate rescue. On excavation sites, the basic personal protective equipment to be worn would include a hard hat or protective headwear, gloves, protective eyewear, and high visibility vests, as well as steel-toed boots. The orange safety vest is intended to increase visibility. High visibility clothing on an excavation site is extremely important, particularly when there is powered mobile equipment on site. In the event that there is something that does go wrong, the first action is to shut work down immediately. Obviously, the site needs to be secured and make sure that there's no other um, chance of anybody else coming into the site or, or getting personally injured. From there, the different regulatory agencies need to be contacted who the uh, utility is, maybe their safety department or their managers, making sure that everyone is aware of what's going on on the site. In the event of a line hit, a contractor or a homeowner should not step in and start trying to make repairs to the facility. This could put yourself at risk and it could also cause greater damage to the facility. What you wanna do is get yourself to a safe location and wait for the utility or operator to respond to the situation. An emergency response plan should always have a risk assessment, whether it be a field level risk assessment, a job hazard assessment, and that should all be done prior to commencing the excavation to ensure that everybody's on the same page and safety is first and foremost. Safe work plan should always include location of the work being done, phone numbers to call in in case of a, an emergency, for SAS Power, it's 310-2220 uh, or 911. Uh, it's important to have the location in there in case of a, having to call a, an emergency uh, in and, and, and give a emergency personnel a location of, of where they're working. 
and it's important to, to just discuss the, the hazards of working around underground power lines. You don't want to be looking for phone numbers or determining a muster point once an incident has already occurred. These are good things to think about beforehand and have a plan in place in case you do end up having a line contact. So once the incident is resolved and the emergency response com is complete, the next job is to investigate what went wrong and what we need to do to correct that action so it doesn't happen again on future sites, making sure that everyone is aware of why it went wrong and how do we correct that for the future. Some safe practices when working near overhead power lines is put a spotter or a, an observer in place to ensure that the minimum clearances are met. You can put signs in place to mark where the overhead power lines are, make sure it's part of the job plan. It's important that, that everybody that's on the job site is aware of the overhead power lines. SAS Power has stickers that say, look up and live, beware of overhead power lines. And if the equipment doesn't have those stickers on it, contact SAS Power Safety Department. They'll provide you with those stickers to attach to your equipment. Once again, thank you all for taking the time to be here today. For more on the safe digging process, industry best practices, and other valuable information, please visit the SCGA's website at scga.ca. On behalf of the SCGA, I'd like to remind all of you to dig safe this year. If we work together and follow the process, we can make this year our safest year yet.